All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you for your wonderful works, God. Thank you, Father God, for your completed, your your uh, your uh, your finished and complete uh, will, Father, that you set up in six days, God. So, Father, I thank you, God. Uh, for everyone that is on the line, God. Thank you, Father God, for those that are on their way. Thank you for the people that are listening in to this recording, God. Father, I speak a blessing over their life in the name of Jesus. I speak a blessing over their life, God. I speak peace. I speak prosperity, Father God. I speak sozo, healing and wholeness, Father God, deliverance and salvation, God. Uh, Father, what I ask is that uh, every distraction be removed from this call, uh, not just here on my end, Father God, but anybody that's trying to get in on our call, anybody that's that's here listening, Father, uh, I rebuke the spirit uh, of distraction, Father God, of delay in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for a wonderful Bible study. Thank you, Father God, for everything, uh, manifesting the way that you would have it to manifest in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you. Uh, so I thank you for uh, joining us for another Thursday of Reunited, where our goal is to reunite uh, the body of Christ with the gospel of the kingdom of God, and just another exciting time to be able to get together, uh, to be able to fellowship. Uh, and I had to think back, and it's been, uh, I assume, about 20 weeks ago or, or more uh, that Emerson and I, we had uh, some deep conversations. Uh, actually, we've had, we had more conversations uh, before then, but it really got to a point uh, where Emerson asked uh, if we could really offer this to other people and really allow more people to come in uh, and to be able to share in and what we were uh, what we were enjoying, just a lot of real good revelation and time studying the word of God. Uh, so that's where it started. And we didn't have a website at that time. Uh, didn't know <laughs> how we were going to get people together. Obviously, it was right smack dead uh, in the midst of the pandemic. So we uh, well, weren't really uh, able to get together face to face, which wasn't a big deal because uh, Emerson is actually uh, in, in Georgia, uh, in uh, near Atlanta. I'm actually in Dayton, Ohio. So it worked out. So we opened this thing up, start building the website, start adding things in and uh, start recording on Thursday. So every Thursday since then, we've been recording, uh, inviting, uh, you know, those who have confessed hope and faith in Jesus Christ to, to, to come in on the line. Uh, and the goal is for me, as I said, that uh, during all of my time, I was uh, baptized at the age of 14 probably 13, 14 years old. Uh, and what that did for me, it made me feel bad, <laughs> to be honest with you. It was the first time that I really felt bad about the sin I was involved in. So I didn't stop doing it, right? I just felt really bad about it. So it started this, uh, this cycle, this continual cycle of me uh, doing the things I knew I shouldn't do, repenting, feeling horrible. Uh, and between those times, I felt like God hated me. I felt like uh, I wasn't close to God. I felt like uh, you know, it wasn't until I went to church on Sunday, you know, confessed my sins or got in my Bible and read uh, that I felt like I, I was even deserving of any of God's time. And I just kept going back and forth with that until the age of uh, I believe it was about 23, my senior year last year in college. And I broke down on my knees and asked uh, Jesus to come into my heart. And I know for a fact uh, during that time is when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I was filled and immersed. Uh, with the spirit of God and nothing for me has been the same. Has it been perfect? But no. Uh, so it's been a wonderful ride for me. Just been totally uh, excited and on fire for God since then. Uh, but it wasn't until about six years ago that things began to make a, a even, I guess, if I was uh, on my way up a mountain, I mean, it just seems like the slope just went even steeper. I mean, I just really start going up at a, at a higher level. And when I tell you that things have never been the same for me, I uh, went from uh, from from gooder to gooder, uh, from great to great, uh, from glory to glory. And I want to share that with you. And that's the reason why we're here on the line today is so that we can be able to uh, make sure we're drawing in people together. Again, I don't want to waste your time uh, and I don't I don't have time to waste. I have two, actually three kids. Uh, you may hear them in the background during our recordings. I can't can't keep them quiet, especially with a two year old. So you may hear kids crying in the background or running around or whatever it is. So I just have to be honest about that. So I love to spend time with them and be doing something else. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm investing this time in you uh, because I really want to make sure that whatever it is that God wants you to have is that you can have it. Uh, one thing that's important is, is to place a demand. Uh, so if you're not familiar with dealing with the, the anointing or the unction of the Holy Spirit, uh, then it's a case where you have a, you place a demand. You should come in expecting to receive something today. OK, not next week, not next, not next month. But today, so if there are some things uh, that maybe aren't working right in your life, some things that just really aren't manifesting that should, we need to get that get that together. Okay, uh, this thing is 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 very kingdom centered. I, I am I'm real big about Jesus Christ. Uh, he preached 
uh, the kingdom of God during his lifetime. He demonstrated the reality of the kingdom of God. Uh, and then he also taught the kingdom of God. OK, actually, you know, he was died, buried, resurrected, came back, <laughs> showed himself to over over 40 days to, to, to hundreds of people. And what did he do? What did he, do? He, he taught the kingdom of God. So I know it's, it's of the importance on his heart. So why wouldn't it be uh, of the importance on my heart? Even to the point where in Matthew 6, 33, it says, seek first, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. I mean, and that is a command. I think we take it as a option uh, or something that's a suggestion, but it's a command that we do that. Uh, and the reason why things aren't being added onto us the way that we would like is because we're not taking that first command. We're not doing what God is asking us to do. So again, on a weekly basis, we're coming in, making sure we can just piece this thing apart, just take it piece by piece. So uh, today, what we're going to do is continue on where we left off uh, last week, last Thursday. Uh, just been excited taking this walk or this journey through uh, the book of John chapter three. And it's been a blessing to me. And I, I pray and hope that it's been a blessing to you. So if you uh, haven't had the opportunity to join us, I encourage you to get back in, not just the last week, but the previous weeks. We had some wonderful recordings. Uh, Emerson did a wonderful uh, message on soul food and the importance on uh you know, the, the, the diet that we're actually taking in, not not physical diet, but our spiritual diet and how that impacts our lives. Uh, we also uh, had some wonderful uh, messages from Pastor Burroughs talking about the, the handshake handshake between the uh, the spirit and and the uh, and the flesh. I think that's what it is. I'll make sure I'm right about the spirit and the natural. OK, make sure I say that the spirit and the natural powerful, powerful messages. I encourage you to go back and listen to that. Uh, Brother Greg G taught over two weeks. Um, about a shift in the kingdom. Uh, it's a pro more of a prophetic uh, message than a teaching message, but he did do some uh, a number of, uh, a good amount of teaching in that, but more of a prophetic message, but just a lot of powerful messages that if you have not uh, make, made time to, to go back and, and go into those archives, I encourage you to do that. Also, uh, there is Kingdom Curriculum that is available on www.victoryinthekingdomofgod.com. I encourage you to do that. If you haven't uh, registered for that curriculum and started going through those messages and proving and testing those things and finding it, then shame on you. Why? Because God has, 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 has sent uh, that information for you. OK, it's, it's everything that I knew about the kingdom of God up until this time last year. And that's for you. OK, free of charge doesn't cost you anything but time. Uh, so I encourage you to go in. And my, my challenge for you is, is to remain the same. I challenge anybody to go in, go through the entire curriculum, prove the information, apply the information and try to stay the same. Try not to have a huge drastic change in your life. I'd be very surprised if that could ever happen. So, again, I encourage you to do that if you haven't done that. So today we're going to pick up in, uh, in John chapter three, verse number one. And I know that we have someone here uh, that's, that's on the line. Who, who is this that, 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 that I see that 404 area code? Who's at this with us right now? I'm on. Okay, is that Emerson? Yeah, down okay. in Texas. In the great state <laughs> yeah. of Texas. Yeah, in the great state of Texas. So so Emerson, uh, he actually traveled out to, to Texas, to Houston, Texas. Uh, so he is not in Georgia. I mean, he, it's amazing. So he was in uh, Ohio, uh, moved to Georgia, and now he's 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 in he's in Texas. So we got worldwide uh, Emerson. So I thank you for joining us, Emerson. Uh, so we're gonna get right into uh, John chapter three, and I'm just gonna just kind of piece through until we get uh, near ch chapter uh, or verse number five, and then I'd like to hear some words from you, Emerson, if you don't mind. But uh, okay. there, I think we have somebody else on here too. Okay, and who who else is on here? Okay, and they may not, they may not, uh, may not. Okay, may not be able to say anything. We're gonna go 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 right ahead. So, uh, in verse number one, it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And three says, Jesus answered and said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
And Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And we've covered a number of things, you know, and getting a lot of stuff out of those verses. Uh, Emerson, if you don't mind, can you share uh, maybe something that's on your heart, you know, either right there at the end that we got to or anything that we read that you want to share? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. I think uh, I think the importance of that particular thing, that's what's born of the flesh is flesh, and that was born of the spirit is spirit. I think it's, it's, it's not uh, anything that uh, should be complicated. I think it should be very uh, plain and simple is that there is a difference between the flesh and the spirit, especially when you've given your life uh, to Christ and asked him to come into your life, that there's a difference and that uh, a man must live by his spirit now and, and, and try to move away the best he can by the spirit of God from the natural. In other words, your natural senses, your natural mind, your natural feelings, your natural emotions. Uh, we no longer have to be led by those things. I believe it's God. I know it's God's desire that we be led by the Spirit. That's why Jesus uh, explained that you must be born again. He didn't say it's an it's an option, uh, but in, if you want to operate into this world, the spiritual world that He speaks of, you have to be born again uh, and born by the Spirit. It's a must. And so, uh, that being born again. Uh, a lot of people have messed that up, and they've, they've described it as a lot of different type of things, but that's the purpose of, of uh, this uh, programming tonight, is that we do put a clarity on it, and I do mean we put a clarity on it by the Word of God, as you've uh, made it plain and clear, uh, Corey. So uh, that that's what I have right at the moment here. Uh, leave the floor open. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm going to revisit uh, because I know that these are, are very powerful scriptures. And one thing that I've noticed from listening to some other teachings from other people, uh, when it is something that's good, I mean, you may have to listen to it three, four, five, six times. And that may be a scripture. I mean, that's the thing I, I didn't realize until, you know, I, I kept seeing script, the same scripture revisited, revisited. And it seemed like every time that it was read, I would see it slightly in a different way. And it's just an amazing thing. But we we visited this scripture. Uh, but let's 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 look at first Corinthians chapter two, verse uh, 12 through 14. And, and the reason why is what you were talking about is this born of the flesh and born of the spirit. OK, and it clearly says. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things, right, with spiritual. But the natural man, it's, 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 I can almost hear your voice right here, Emerson. I don't know why, I think I've heard you you make uh, this same comment multiple <laughs> multiple times, but I hear your voice when, I, when I'm reading this, but it says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness, right, unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Isn't that, isn't that an interesting thing? So when we're looking at that, here's one of the biggest challenges that we have to make sure that we understand, not just with this scripture. OK, we're talking about this life that we're coming into is that we are so trained by our, our senses. OK, having this uh, sense realm uh, awareness or sense, sense realm on acknowledgement of our existence that we miss some of the most important things. And I think this time of this so-called pandemic has really shown us how powerful invisible things are. I mean, I would have to say that this country would much rather have had another country declare war against them with guns and missiles and planes and people, things that they could see much rather than have uh, this war that's been, a, you know, that, that's come, come across this nation uh, that we can't see, right? I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, just, a, it's just an amazing thing to realize how powerful invisible things are yet when we hear about invisible things as it concerns the kingdom of god and the things of god then we diminish them right we belittle them we make it seem like it's just not a big deal it's a small thing when we realize that there are so many massive things okay that we can't see that that can, that can harm us airborne you know things in our home in our workplace okay can shut down everything 
Uh, my wife's school, uh, one of those schools that she actually works in, they had to shut the entire school down in an instant. Uh, only because they they went in and and with some type of testing, they tested and saw that they had something in there that shouldn't have been in the wire. Okay, it was it was in the pipes? You can't see that. Okay, there's no way that people can see it. So that's a dangerous thing to understand how powerful these invisible things are. So when we start looking at uh, the, the, these these scriptures and the way that we're looking at, at John chapter three, understand the importance of being able to to see. Right. So if you're waiting to be able to see it with your physical eyes to believe, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's not going to happen. If you're waiting to be able to hear it uh, with your ears uh, before you believe. OK, then I'm, I'm telling you, it may not happen. I mean, it's just a, it's just an amazing thing to realize. That we have to make a choice like a child. OK, and Jesus talks about us, 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 us being like children. We have to make the, the choice to believe even though we may not know why we believe okay it's, it, we're not asked to know all the details about it and, and then and then i think the the temptation is is that once we actually confess hope and faith in christ like in romans uh 10 and 9 once we actually confess uh this this hope and faith uh in, in jesus christ then then the challenge is is that we get the greatest miracle in the beginning <laughs> right so we, we we diminish the salvation we diminish uh, this this sozo that we receive, this deliverance, this freedom that we receive, but but that is something that we 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 can't even see, right? You can't see it. How would you prove to a person that you have been saved, right? How can you how can you prove to a person uh, just just without a, as a matter of fact, okay, that you have been totally changed and reborn as a spirit being? How can you prove that, right? So it's a case where you have to and I have to be able to uh, admit that. And, and, and choose to believe that for myself, okay? And, and, and at that point, now it's amazing to know that my spiritual eyes can be open. Isn't that a wonderful thing, okay? So when we're looking at that, scripture is talking about these spiritual things that must be compared uh, with the spiritual things. And that, and that is in reference to uh, Jesus' reference in, in verse number six, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is is spirit. Just a powerful, powerful thing. Emerson, did you have a, a another comment before before I, before I add anything else? Well, I, I think you touched on some very great things, uh, Corey. Uh, you touched as you were speaking. Uh, that was just is so powerful because what you're what what God is asking us to do, as you mentioned, is to move away from the natural. All our, all our lives, we have been taught natural things. We have been saying, if, if you do this in the natural, you, you'll, you'll see a reward for it. Uh, if you practice good, you'll be a good player. Uh, if you study, you'll be a good student. These things are natural, and these things are very true. And so what God here is asking us to do is to move away and step away from your natural and live in a spiritual world. Uh, just like our programming is always talking about a kingdom, there is an entirely different kingdom out here, but the only way for you to comprehend it is by the Spirit. And so you touched on that very well, and, and if people don't get that, then they'll miss our whole programming, I think. That this is an entirely different world that God desires for us to live in. Because uh, especially nowadays, we're seeing the fall and the destruction of the kingdom of man due to this unseen a thing that you that you spoke of, it 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 just it just took us for a, a loop. So so guess what? What timing and what blessing it is to have some type of program to let you know, hey, it's not over because you don't live in this kingdom. You're not of this kingdom, and like you said, because you can't see it, hear it, taste it, or smell it, doesn't mean that 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 it's over for you. Because God's kingdom is a whole entire different kingdom. So you touched on everything very well. I just wanted to echo that behind you. That was wonderful. That's great. Go ahead, brother, please. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. And uh, there's, a, there's a number of things that you said last week uh, that, that really struck me. And uh, I, I, before I say that, then I want to make sure that I just kind of, I'm kind of dropping a couple of nuggets to try to bring you know those up to speed that may not have been with us uh, last week. And also those that were just tying up some of those loose ends and making sure, again, repetition is a very powerful thing. So hearing it one time, probably not a good enough. Hearing it two or three times, probably not good enough. Uh, really, the, the thing we should do is, is write it down, uh, speak it right ourselves. As far, as far as we're talking about the word of God, speak it ourselves. Uh, you know, uh, Miles Monroe actually said that we don't own it until we've heard it seven times, which is a, is a, is a, is a powerful thing to understand. Uh, so with that being said, 
then just trying to, to revisit a couple of these things I believe are very, very important. Is a case when we're looking at uh, this kingdom, okay, then it's a case where we have to understand that kingdoms have everything in them that every citizen needs. The challenge is, is that a kingdom starts as an idea. It starts as a thought, okay? Now, we were born into these countries, okay, that are a part of bigger kingdoms. So with us, we are actually physically able to see, in our case, we're in a country, not a kingdom, okay? We're in a democracy, not a kingdom, but there are still our kingdoms. Uh, that, that So imagine maybe England, okay, uh, a country like that. So you can see a queen or you can see a king. You can see the parliament, okay? You can see the, the officers, the guards, right? You can see those things. But what we don't understand that there has to be an invisible governing body and system and rules that actually put those things in place and cause order in order for us to see this government actually manifest. So when we're dealing with the kingdom of God, then we can start to have some sort of comparison. Okay, I think it's, it's, it's hard to make a direct comparison because the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is so much higher than the kingdom of, of man, but there's still a way to be able to make some comparisons. So when we uh, normally uh, have anything as it concerns health, okay, as a citizen, uh, I'll, I'll give it a, a comparison to, you, to the United States. If you come into the United States, and you've taken on citizenship, but the country that you came from, maybe they didn't have uh, health care. OK, uh, here's the reality is that you could need help. You could need attention. And no one told you you could pick up a cell phone or your home phone and dial 911. Right. Isn't that amazing? If you don't know it, they don't even know that you need any help. Right. It's their responsibility to respond and help you out. But if you don't actually pick up the phone and make the call, then no one's going to respond. OK, so there's no way for you to be able to access the benefits that are available to you if you don't at least take that step. OK, I mean, this is a crazy thing. What if you've never seen an ambulance? Right. What if you've never seen a hospital? What if you just just had to jump out on faith because you've never seen any of that? And someone said, hey, if you call this number, then they're going to come and rescue you. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's crazy to think about because we see these ambulances and we see these things. So it's not that foreign to us. Uh, another thing to imagine is uh, imagine uh, your, your house is being broken into. OK. And imagine a person uh, from another country is they, they, they maybe they didn't have law enforcement. Maybe they didn't have anybody that was responsible, a governing system that was responsible for enforcing law. Uh, so they were used to having stuff taken, right? They were used to people taking stuff for them and they could, from them and they couldn't do anything about it. What if that person didn't know that here in America that you could dial 911 and have the authorities show up, right? And they don't call, right? They don't ask for help. They don't do anything. So people keep running in and out of their house and taking stuff. Then, then the reality is, is that these benefits that they have, they won't manifest and won't do them any good because for one, they may live in ignorance of them. And for two, they may not know how to access them. Okay. So when we're dealing with this kingdom concept, understand that the kingdom of God has everything that you and I need. Okay. It's more powerful than any kingdom that's in, in, in all of history. Okay including all the kingdoms and countries and governmental things that are present here. It's the most powerful kingdom on the planet and in all history and all time. OK. And again, we're talking about seeing it. You're saying, hey, Corey, you must be talking crazy out of your mind. Right. Do you really believe what you're saying? I'm telling you, yes, I've, I'm living it. OK, I, I have proved it. I've seen the benefits for myself. Uh, so when I have things that attack my body, you call 911. I, I make a phone call also. Right. OK. But it's not to, it's, it's not to. Uh, uh, the ambulance or the hospital. OK, uh, so for me, uh, you know, uh, or for you, you may take a prescription from a doctor. I take prescriptions also, too. Right. I, I, my prescriptions come straight from the word of God. And some people can say that. But I'm telling you that these things have, had, have been a tremendous benefit for me. OK, so if I need uh, some help, I believe that there are some big, large, huge angels. Right. That are waiting to be called. But I got to let them know, hey, <laughs> hey, I need some help. Right. Come and come and take care of this situation for me. I have to I have to go somewhere like Emerson's in Texas. Then, then he can have his angels go before him. Right. He can have them follow him, have them keeping him and have him keep his home while he's away. You know, the powerful thing. OK, so with that being said, the story that I thought about Emerson is when you mentioned going into McDonald's. And matter of fact, I'll let you tell the story and then I, and I'll tell you what, what I got 
for, from that that helped me tremendously. Can you tell that story again about going into Madonna, McDonald's and trying to purchase something without any money? Sure, sure. Uh, and it deals with having a currency. And we know the currency in the kingdom of man is, is money. And so whether it comes on a plastic card or whether you have uh, the green dollar bills or change. And so anyways, uh, if me and Corey and <clears throat> whoever else is on the line, say we all go to McDonald's and we would like to have five Big Macs, two Cokes, I mean, five Big Macs, five fries and five Cokes. And the cashier rings it up and say, okay, sir, that will be uh, $27.50. And so my next uh, response is, well, ma'am, I don't have any money, but I have faith. And she say, okay, you can have faith, but you're not going to have any of these Big Macs, fries, or the drinks. Because the currency of the kingdom of man is money. In the currency of the kingdom of God is faith. And faith in what? Faith in believing what he said. Faith in believing that he is true, faith in believing that there's another kingdom. I know you can't see it, but if you want to access to it, that faith must be uh, must be your currency that you enter into. You enter into the spiritual world by having faith, faith in Christ. And so that's that's that story that uh, Corey uh, was was asking about. So Corey, take it from there, sir. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, in Romans chapter five, verse number two, it says, "By whom also." we have access by faith, okay? And I, we gotta make sure, we, we gotta get the terminology. There's no accident about the way uh, that things are worded biblically. So we wanna make sure we take note of it, okay? So I'm gonna start with that line again. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, okay? Wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, okay? So here's the thing about the kingdom of God that we have to make sure we understand is that nothing is new to God, okay? Everything may be new to us, okay? But it's not new to God, God is eternal. So everything that you and I and all humanity of all eternity, of all time, whatever need, God stored that up in six days, okay? So this is not new stuff to him. Now here's the challenge for us. The challenge is, is that God puts everything behind faith, okay? So imagine a door or an access point is that this grace is more like a storehouse. It's like a reservoir. It's like an armory, and it stores up every single thing that you and I could ever need, right? And the challenge is, is that we are trying to come into this armory, into this storehouse. We're trying to come to this great reservoir by other ways right so we're saying hey i don't like that i need to be able to get to this stuff this good stuff that i want by faith i don't like that so i'm going to try to get it every other way that i can and there's another scripture uh not too far away from it in romans chapter four and four and it says this now to him that work it okay pay attention because for most people in religion this is the primary thing that they're doing they're saying hey on Sunday, okay, I went early, I stayed late, okay? I, I went on Saturday, if you if you believe the Sabbath is on the Saturday, I did the same thing, I went early, I stayed late, I raised my hand 17 times, I said 15 hallelujahs, uh, I made sure that I, pray, I, I, I paid exactly 10%, I made sure I didn't go over, but I made sure that I wasn't under 10%, I made sure uh, that I was I was I was holding my head in such a way that people saw that I was religious. I had my religious you know outfit on, right? Is, is that is that I am doing these things, and when I'm when I'm out in public, I make sure that that I'm saying uh, my blessing, right? I bless my food so people can hear it, right? I, I'm I'm trying to figure out all of these works that 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 actually uh, seem to justify me, okay, before God, seem to to give me kudos, right, and in, in the eyes of God, and it says. And I'm going to repeat those those lines again. But it says now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace. OK, but of debt. So the challenge is, is that we want to believe that we're making God in debt to us. <laughs> so because of our works, then we think that God is tallying up. So he's saying, oh, you know what? Uh, I owe uh, Emerson, right? I, I owe Bridget. You know, I owe these people or such and such. And, you know, I've been holding out. So finally, I'm going to go ahead and pay out, right? But understand the way that grace works, that, that this is not a debt, right? You're not working 
are earning anything from God, we can't earn anything from God. It's too expensive. Grace is too expensive, right? We, we can't earn a one unit of grace by anything that we can do. So if we're not going to make sure that we access the benefits of God, okay, in this kingdom by faith, okay, then, then we're not going to get it, okay? It, it's just not going to happen, okay? So in the, in the uh, story that Emerson was, was talking about, it made me think about the scriptures that we, we mentioned last week. One in, uh, in Matthew, um, let me make sure I'm uh, looking at it correctly. What is the second one? I got the first one. Okay, but it's, it's the, the scriptures that are talking about the keys of the kingdom. So we have Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And also Matthew 18 and 18. So these are powerful, powerful scriptures. So what we talked about last week is the fact that when we were given the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Right. So we didn't we didn't get the keys to we got the keys of. Right. So it is a case where we're understanding the principles. We understand that the, the, the way that these these things are happening and working so that they can benefit us. So Jesus Christ actually handed those over to us. So that what we lock up in heaven is locked up, right? It's done, okay? It doesn't matter how much you beg and cry and plead. And then if we loose it, okay, with these keys, now it's free flowing and no man can actually stop it from pouring into our lives. So when I heard the story of uh, what Emerson was talking about, it blew my mind because I thought, what if we went into that McDonald's that Emerson is talking about? And I went in, got a pocket full of, uh, of money, right? Say I had a $100 bill. And uh, Emerson, he, he told you the order that you that, that that he was talking about. You want some hamburgers, want some fries, want a drink, right? You say, hey, you know, I'm going to go up to this counter and I'm going to buy whatever I want to buy. But before you decide to do that, imagine entering in. OK, we're talking about this entering in, breaking the threshold. Right. So say you did enter in. You actually broke the threshold uh, of the McDonald's uh, establishment. And then what you decide to do is, is you decide to wreck the entire place. Right. You went and you knocked over the trash can. You went and you start busting out the windows, right? You start slapping all the patrons and customers are sitting down trying to eat their food, slapping food out of their mouth. You decide that you're going to take some nasty, horrible stuff and pour it all on the floor, right? So after you've done all the, the harm and hurt and damage that you could possibly think about doing, now you decide to walk yourself up to the counter and place your order with a pocket full of money, <laughs> right? So my question to you, and I'll ask you, Emerson, what, what do you think is going to happen in that scenario? Okay. Yeah, that's a good scenario. Good question. And my answer would be, uh, you're probably not going to get your order uh, took. Uh, I think they'll probably call the police and, and have you escorted out of there. That's uh, the answer to the question. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think sometimes we don't, understand the power of these keys that God that, that God is talking about that Jesus Christ has given to us uh, because what we do is we violate every single thing every law every principle in the kingdom of God but we expect still to get everything uh, that God has provided for us right so how ridiculous would it be for the person uh, to, to, to to fly to, to cry and plead even to the point where maybe he decides he's going to take McDonald's to uh, to court and, and have a lawsuit because they won't serve him, right? Doesn't that 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 just that's just absolutely ridiculous. But oftentimes, what we don't understand is what we're dealing with the kingdom of God is that we refuse we refuse to forgive people. And last week we dealt with forgiveness and the power of forgiveness. We refuse to forgive ourselves, right? We won't allow God to actually love us, even though He's loved us. He loves us unconditionally. We won't allow Him to love us, right? We keep bringing up our our, our old past, our sin consciousness, and all the stuff that we did, even though God said He's washed that away. And, and you you keep bringing it up and you won't you won't let it go. Maybe someone did something to you. Right. Someone hurt you. Uh, a, a mom, a dad, an uncle, an aunt, a family member, a neighbor. Right. A co-worker. Right. Maybe it happened when you were a child or an adult and, and you won't let it go. Can't let it go. Right. You keep revisiting that. And as a matter of fact, if anybody asked you about it, you are you're more than glad to go in talk about how horrible and heinous and bad that person is, right? And how no good they are. And, and, and what, we, what we don't understand is we are hearing the sounds of a door or a lock 
being locked. I mean, we literally are beginning to lock ourselves away from these principles, right? And it's amazing to think about some of the activities that we get into. We went into some of those scriptures are talking about inheriting the kingdom of God. Some of the things that we can get ourselves involved in, yes, we are, are, are saved by grace and God loves you, right? That grace allows his love to continue to be demonstrated and poured out to you. That grace uh, allows you to be able to have things that you that you that you shouldn't that you shouldn't get that I shouldn't get. OK, so we have that grace and mercy. Right. So if we look at grace and mercy, then they're they're the same coin. Right. Two sides of the same coin. OK, you have grace on one side, mercy on the other and right on the edge. Right. If you're thinking about a coin right on the edge of the coin is law. <laughs> right. Now, I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments necessarily, but I'm just talking about, again, in kingdoms. OK, any governments, then we have expectations that we expect from the citizens. And, and th if they don't follow suit with that, then they lose privileges. OK, so the same way with the kingdom of God is that we can lock ourselves out of some of those things. And we don't understand why it is that we don't have some things manifest in our lives. OK, so it's just a powerful thing. OK, so with that being said, let's look at Hebrews chapter nine. This is something I know. Yes, sir. Let me say something right along with you said there. Just Absolutely. As you were speaking, this is why it is so important to do that. That scenario that you just brought up there about wrecking and going to that's wonderful. That's why it's so important to do exactly what, what Jesus told us. He said, rest. He said, come and find some rest. And he, then he said, if you would only believe, if you would only do those two simple things, rest in him and believe, guess what? You won't be tearing up nothing. You won't because guess what? He said it. I believe it. And now I'm resting. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what's taking place in my life or, or those around me. I'm going to rest and I'm going to believe. I'm going to rest and I'm going to believe what this kingdom has for me, what this kingdom has provided for me, what he talks about, what he says he'll do, what he's already done. I'm going to rest and I'm going to believe. And that way it's going to keep me from not tearing up the kingdom, not not uh, messing something up that I won't just receive as I rest and believe. That's powerful what you said. It just hit me right there. Sorry, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's, that's exactly what I want. And I, I appreciate it. Um, so before I get into the Hebrew, well, you, you can actually turn there if you if you want to. Uh, but it's uh, Hebrews chapter nine. And we're going to start with uh, verse number 15. So I'm, I'm just going to just say this before we actually get into that. And the revelation I got, I literally got this picture and this is going to be a little bit graphic. So, you know, it's, it's all I'm going to have to just let you know it's going to be a little bit graphic. Uh, but the reality is, is that Jesus Christ is the gate. Right. He is the door. He is the way. OK, so uh, for many of us and we were standing outside right uh, of this of this great kingdom, uh, maybe someone shared some of the benefits with us or, or, or maybe, you know, it's just a case where we, we didn't really know exactly what was going on. But we knew in our heart that something that I needed was on the other side uh, of that door. Uh, so we confess hope and faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, we believe that he was the son of God, was risen from the dead. We were baptized. Okay, some of us may have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, maybe with evidence of speaking in tongues. And then we cross over this, th this threshold, right? So we go through by faith, right? You can't get anything in the kingdom by faith. So now you have your access and interest into the kingdom of God. We have our citizenship and you cross over the threshold, right? But then, like I said last week, we do an about face. And all we do is, is that we start worshiping the door. We start worshiping the gate. Nothing wrong with that. But the challenge is, is that all the benefits are actually further into the kingdom. Right. You, you need to take a journey and actually explore the wonderful, vast benefits uh, that God has actually provided for us. And for most of us, we just live our entire lives completely ignorant of the things that God has provided for us, or we're aware of those things, but we won't access them by faith. So we receive our salvation by faith, but then we refuse to actually receive our healing by faith. Okay. We say, oh, that's too hard. We receive to, 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 to receive our provision by faith. We say that's too hard. We, re we refuse to allow prosperity, abundance to manifest in our lives. Oh, that's too hard, right? Our relationships, marriages, children. Oh, no, no. You know what? I need to go uh, to some other place because it's too hard for God, even though we received the greatest miracle, which is in salvation, right? So when we're dealing with this, then I realize this word assimilation is so important, okay? Why is this word assimilation so important? Because you can have a person have the same mindset that they had on the other side, on the outside of the kingdom, and bring that same mentality, same culture, same habit, everything 
into the kingdom of God. So the image that I had was these people come into this beautiful place. I said, man, you have gold, uh, you know, uh, uh, gold roads. OK, the roads paved with gold, uh, wonderful buildings, beautiful buildings, fl uh, uh, you know, flowers everywhere. Landscaping is I mean, some of the just the most beautiful place that you've ever seen. And imagine if you're a new person and you walk into this kingdom and you see people defecating in the flower bed. Right. I mean, literally pulling their pants down and pooping in the flower bed. OK, what if you saw, you know, another gentleman, uh, you know, had the nerve to, 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 to urinate, to pee on the walls of this great kingdom. OK, imagine these people having this this loud music with with all types of horrible uh, derogatory language and all kinds of stuff blasting out through the night. I mean, just banging right blasting out through the night. I mean, imagine if you saw people being murdered, okay, being uh, mutilated right in the streets, right in this kingdom. That that wouldn't make any sense, okay? But when we are dealing with the kingdom of God, what we have what we have failed to think about is is for most of us, we're still living these same lifestyles, okay? Even though we've been born as a spirit being reborn encased by the spirit of God, stamped with the spirit of God, even though we may have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, and, and that Holy Ghost is, 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 is available for us, okay? Even though we have that, then we haven't allowed the process of sanctification for our minds to be renewed, right? We, don't, we haven't gone through a, a mind renewal. We haven't allowed sanctification. We haven't allowed this purging or cleansing uh, that God talks about in John chapter 15. We haven't allowed that. So we, we don't understand, again, when I talked about those keys, that we keep, what, locking ourselves out, right? Because of our, 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 our behavior, because we refuse to assimilate fully into the kingdom of God and figure, figure out, you know what? Things on the outside don't work the way that they do on the inside. So we don't understand why we're not accessing our health care benefits, OK, or our safety benefits or our relationship benefits. OK, just 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 a thing. Again, I, I'm sorry. It was a little bit graphic, but that's, that's the way that I that I received this. It blew my mind. I'm thinking, man, we really got to get this thing together. Uh, because people on the outside, they are, they're fully aware of some of the stuff that's going on in the kingdom of God. They may not come in themselves, but they're watching you. They're seeing you. OK. And they're, and they're also watching to see if what you're talking about is actually manifesting in your life. OK. So you're telling them about this great place. But then they see you walking out and your bag is empty. OK. You, you're not having the promises of God manifesting your life. OK. So we're, we're billboards, literally walking billboards for the kingdom of God. So what are we advertising? Not what we want people to believe that we're advertising. Well, what are we actually advertising with our lives? OK, uh, that's that's the thing that I just wanted to make sure I could say. You have anything to say, uh, Emerson, before before I before I read the scripture? Yeah, I think I think that's powerful, brother. I just wanted to as you were speaking, uh, God just gave me another example. Like you talked about the defecation and the peeing and all that. stuff. So, listen, another thing is this wonder as a kingdom citizen. Why are you even worried? Hello. Hello. Did you hear me? Let me repeat that. As a kingdom citizen, why are you even worrying? Amen. He tells us about worrying. He says, what are you, what are you worrying about? <laughs> and then he goes there to say, well, why are you concerned about what you're going to eat, drink, or, 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 or whatever? You know, and all this is provided for you. Why, well, you see, well, I, I see what things are going on. And I, I, I uh, see, see, there you go. Living by your sight. You understand what I'm saying? So as a kingdom citizen, you must understand the benefits that you have. And guess what? One of them is never, you ever, ever have to worry. You don't have to worry. That's just hit me strong as you were speaking. And that's, I think that's going to be a great concern. Well, people don't see you worrying when the whole world is shaking upside down because of the times that we're living in. Here you are not worrying at all, full of joy, full of peace, full of happiness, full of things. And that don't mean that we don't go through things. I didn't say that, but guess what? I sure ain't worried about them because I understand my benefits and I've read the package and I understand the constitution of my kingdom from where I come from. So that strives, uh, uh, that, that relieves any type of worry. It relieves it, brother. We have so many benefits, brother, that you speak of and, and so many things that has get, God has given us in this kingdom, which is perfection, which has given us everything that pertains to life. Now hear this, that pertains to life that pertains to life and godliness. I've given you everything in this kingdom that pertains to life and godliness. So he's already covered everything, bro, in this kingdom. Please, the people on this line and those that you know, do not worry. 
I, I'm done, brother. I don't want to take too much time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, is there anybody else on here that has anything to say, Corey? Is there anybody else on? Uh, if if you do have something, you feel free uh, to say anything. Uh, if you want to put something in the chat box, I'm watching the chat box. Uh, anybody okay. want have, have anything they want to say? All right, we're going we're gonna to continue uh, right along. And the scripture that came to, came to my heart when you were talking, uh, Emerson, was about the uh, uh, when Jesus said uh, we can look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. And, uh, and this is, uh, you know, we've heard it before. Right. But in times like now, people want to see, do you mean it? Right. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Right? Isn't that what you were talking about, Emerson? Hey, Amen. That's it, brother. That's it. So when we're dealing with uh, uh, where we are right now, here's the challenge. The people that are around you, they may not tell it to you, but all that uh, uh, so-called evangelism, you know, that many people think that they've been doing, right? inviting people to their church right over and over and over again uh and if they don't come or if they do come and don't come back and they call them heathens and backsliders here's the challenge this is the opportunity that you've been waiting for right so when you go into the break room and they're talking about this uh this this pandemic they're talking about these these these, these tough financial times and then you go to, to poor mountain and join the conversation and talking the same language they're talking. Why do they want to buy something that you offering? <laughs> right. They say, man, he, he, ain't, he ain't no better than me. Right. Why, why would you do that? That, 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 that is an opportunity when they're talking about their, their, their family, brothers and sisters or, or, or children who are going to the hospital back and forth not just from the the virus but understand that the cancer is more real than this so-called pandemic right there are far more people that will die of cancer this year than anything that's coming that's happening as far as this pandemic goes and they're waiting for you they're waiting to see what what are you offering right are you walking in this healing that you're talking about right and, and what about your needs getting met when everybody else is in crisis and panicking do we have peace right? Do we have joy, right? Is that manifesting in our lives? So if you haven't noticed it yet, these people are watching you and you wonder why so many people will reject the words that you say. It's because they're listening to the, the again, the, the, the actions. Your actions speak louder than words, okay? They're seeing, is it manifesting in your life? Is it real to you, right? <laughs> because now that the pressure's on, they say, let, let me see what that looks like, okay? So, so with that being said, let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter nine, because it's a, it's a very powerful scripture and we'll end, uh, possibly end with the scripture. You may have a couple more, but this is one I wanna make sure uh, that we take a look at. And again, this is in, starting in verse, verse number 15, okay? Powerful, powerful scripture, okay? Uh, okay, chapter nine, verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, that uh, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also be, uh, there must also of necessity be uh, the death of the testator, okay? For a testament is of force after men are dead. Pay attention to this. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. <laughs> this is some powerful stuff, okay? So, for anyone that's on here that may not be aware of the way that a will and a, and a living testament, living will and testament works, uh, then this is a reality, is that you can, and if you're just joining us, uh, let me see if I can, yeah, I'll take care of that, okay. Uh, so this is the way that a will and testament works. So you can have your will that's in your heart, okay? But unless you actually speak it, and definitely write it down, which is more important, then it doesn't actually manifest. That's the testament, okay? So when we're looking at this scripture, the question that you should ask yourself is, 
when was this will actually put in place okay when was it put in place okay so for for any of us that's looking at this it calls jesus jesus christ the testator okay a powerful word so put a pen right there as far as looking at a living will and testament if you've never seen or heard the difference between a will and testament and a trust one of the major things about a trust is is that it will keep a family from having to go to probate okay so if you haven't heard this I'm not trying to encourage you to get a will, but you should, okay, uh, or a trust. But when a person dies, then what happens is if they don't have a trust in place, then all of this person's assets can be locked up. Everything they worked hard for their whole life, it's locked up and it goes to what's called probate. And then it has to actually wait until this time in court where they decide, okay, not the family, not the wife, okay, but the court decides what will actually be taken as far as taxes, okay? Anything that may be taken as far as debt that's owed to people. Once all that stuff is taken, now the family has, has the rights of what's left over, right? So a trust will actually keep that from happening. And it makes sure that whatever it is on the heart of the individual while they were living is that it actually activates, right? This, this is the same thing with the will is it actually activates and comes alive at the death of a person. So you can write this will and this trust when you're living, but it doesn't it doesn't actually come alive until you die, okay? So understand when we're talking about this 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 testator is that in 6 days God decided what he wanted you to have, okay? He decided what he wanted us to have in 6 days. Everything again this vast armory, right? The storehouse, uh this 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 vast uh, 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 this bountiful thing, this inheritance is the word that we were trying to make sure we, we could leave with you last week. This great inheritance. I need us to make sure we get the picture of this inheritance, okay? It is far more limitless than we can ever imagine. So God has already given that inheritance. He's already made that, inher that inheritance available, right? When? In six days, okay? So the will was actually written in six days. Now, here's the, here's the powerful thing. This will that was actually written it doesn't actually have strength as what the what the scripture says or come alive until the testator dies <laughs> isn't that crazy who is the testator right jesus christ so at the moment that jesus christ gives his life okay he is he is he is crucified spends three days three days in hell okay he, he raises he is risen shows himself alive to everyone it is upon his death that now this will takes hold and takes life and now it takes it and has a life and now it is made available to you and me isn't that a powerful thing okay so i can't get into everything i would love for us to be able to have, and I, this is what i'm encouraging us to do is to just piece through unpacking our uh, emerson had a wonderful uh, message talking about forget not all of our all, all of his benefits right don't forget his benefits. Talking about your benefit package and a wonderful sermon. I encourage you to uh, look look for online. You can Google Emerson uh, Emerson Winfield, and you can actually find uh, that that message. Powerful message. Okay, we have such a wonderful benefit package. Okay, these rights is the way I say it. Okay, when I look at faith, faith is for me is my birthright. That's how far I go with it. Okay, it is my birthright. So when I come to God, I'm standing in my birthrights. And as I become aware of the things that are actually stored up for me in this great will, now I am access, accessing it not by works, right, but by faith. So it's a powerful thing to understand the importance of how this actually works out and the death of Jesus Christ and releasing the inheritance. So before I, before I end with that, I mentioned a trust. So here's another thing about a trust that's interesting that you may not be able to do with a will. With a trust, you can actually store everything up as an inheritance to whoever you decide to make the inheritance for, but you can lock it up. So if you have it for a child, even though it could be a billion dollars that's stored up for a child, then in a trust, you can lock it up. And if that child doesn't go to school, if you decide that they want you want them to go to college and get a degree, if they don't graduate, they won't have it. If that child is locked up, okay, and is a rebellious child, then you can decide that they can't get access to it if they if they if they're a rebellious child. If they're in drugs, okay, and alcohol addiction, you can put it in there in there in the trust to say that that's going to lock their benefits up. And even though this child can be a billionaire by an inheritance, okay, a child, I mean, he can live in poverty but be a billionaire by inheritance and won't be able to access any of the benefits because he won't align with the will 
of the testator. Isn't that amazing? Okay. So that's what we're talking about. And we're talking about what? Entering into the kingdom of God, right? Seeing the kingdom of God. This importance of knowing our inheritance, accessing our inheritance, using these keys of the kingdom, right? Not in ignorance to lock ourselves out, but knowingly, will, willfully unlocking the benefits that God has stored up for us. Okay, just just a wonderful thing. Uh, I'd like to pause there. Uh, Emerson, do you have anything to say? I know we had someone else join on the line. What, do you have anything to say about what you've heard? Oh no, I just it's been great, brother. Just just listening and 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 uh, it's been very. Uh... Again, iron sharpens iron. The word of God lets us know. That's why it's so important that we uh, we uh, come together and discussing uh, these things, these valuable things to the kingdom, brothers. So, no, I'm just just blessed by this evening's uh, uh, event. Okay, powerful. I appreciate it. And uh, if you're on here, uh, I'm trying to unmute the line, and I, I don't think I can. So I think you may have to do that. So if it's something you would like to say, then you're going to have to go in and, and go ahead and unmute yourself in order to be heard. Um, it's just a case where, again, as I'm, uh, and I'm, I'm just gonna wait for you to speak. Uh, but uh, for me, I can't explain how important it is uh, to make sure that we're getting these principles. Okay, it doesn't make sense uh, to to not assimilate into the kingdom of God. It doesn't make sense to be given all these things. Uh, scripture that I, I I thought about, and I'll say this scripture, uh, and then again take take any uh, make uh, give an opportunity for any. Uh, closing thoughts. Actually, I have two more scriptures, which is crazy. Let me give you one and give you one more. If you'd like to say anything while I'm looking up this scripture, uh, then go ahead and just just you know unmute yourself and you can actually speak. Um, this scripture is in, 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 in Luke chapter 15. Okay. And we've heard this 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 same uh, idea in, in Matthew chapter six. Okay. Uh, but it's just it's just a powerful thing to see how, how wonderful God is and what he wants to give to us. Okay. We're talking about this inheritance. Uh, so if you're looking at Matthew chapter 15, then what I'd like for you to do is look at. No, no, I'm sorry about that. I'm actually wrong. I apologize. It's actually uh, Matthew chapter 12 In Matthew chapter 12. Uh, then look at. Verse number. 34, and it says. For where where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. OK, that's not the one I was looking for. Thirty two is the one I was looking for. OK, let's read thirty one and thirty two. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. OK, and all these things shall be added to you. OK, a command followed by a promise. OK, and it says in thirty two, fear not. Little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Isn't that a powerful thing, right? So for, for a lot of people uh, fighting and scratching and clawing for things that God never even wanted you to have, God told us we don't have to guess and wonder what he values and thinks is important, okay? It says that he, he gave us this great kingdom. Uh, the other scripture, to go along with that one. Let me see if I can find hey, Corey, it. Let me say, yeah, let go me ahead. say something quick when you said that. Absolutely. Uh, that, script, that scripture this, there says, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, when somebody gives you something, you don't run around trying to earn it. Thank you, you just do what? You receive it. So you must live, as Pastor Mark always says, you must live in the receive position. Don't try to earn it. Don't try to. He gives you. It's his good pleasure now to give it to you. So if I'm giving it to you, please just receive it. Don't make it difficult. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it hard. Just receive it. A powerful scripture. Powerful scripture. Go ahead, brother. Hey, amen. And Emerson, to be honest, that may be one of the hardest things for, for us to, 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 to accept. I mean, it may be the most, it sounds so easy, but I think for, for a lot of us, especially coming in with this religious mindset, where we have to earn, work and earn everything to, to simply believe or think or know, except that if I just believe that God has already given to me and I can just access it, that I can't earn it, right? So you always mention that repeat, repeatedly, live in a received position, just receive it. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a hard thing sometimes to say, I just got to receive it, right? I just got to receive it. This is a powerful thing. Yep, yep, uh, that's it. Last scripture, Matthew chapter 25, 34. And it says, then shall the king say unto them on his right side, sorry about that, on his right hand, come, ye blessed of my father. Okay, pay attention to this. Inherit it, inherit. Again, that word inheritance. Inherit the kingdom. 
Now, this is, this is the thing, okay? Don't miss this. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So when we looked at that Hebrews talking about the testator, which is Jesus Christ, remember that this thing is written. It wasn't just written yesterday, okay? This, this, this wonderful, vast benefits, everything that God wants you to have packed in the kingdom. Wow, man. It was prepared for you and for me and for all of God's children from the foundation of the world. <laughs> powerful, powerful thing. Oh, powerful. Any last comments before we close for tonight? Hey, I'm good on this end, brother. Is, it, is, okay. is anybody else on the line, Corey? Yeah, we, we have uh, at least a couple other people uh, just, okay. just just choose not to say anything, and that's fine. Wonder, they just, they yeah. just, just want to listen in, so we, we good. No pressure. That's right. No pressure. Just wondering. Good, good. Yeah. To, glad to have them. Glad to have them. So uh, Bless, just like Emerson said, we're, we're glad to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we do not take take for granted uh, your time. Again, you can spend your time uh, doing anything or absolutely nothing. Uh, so thank you for uh, you know deciding to invest your time here with us. Uh, we love to hear from you. Definitely want you to uh, to come back next week. Uh, the archive of this message will be available uh, in the morning. So go into to victoryinthekingdomofgod.com uh, and and go ahead and check that out. Uh, and then uh, if you uh, again if you want to go back and make sure we get the rest of the messages. I encourage you to look at all the messages. Just a lot of powerful messages. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Emerson, I'd like for you to close us out in prayer. We are done for tonight. Father God, we thank you for who you are and what you've done. We just continue to live in a received position. And that word that was spoken tonight, Lord, we know that it's fallen on good ground, Father God, good ground. And so we just expect a harvest from the word that was given out tonight. We thank you for it. And we're just blessed to, to have you as our Lord and Savior, to have you as our God and with the true and only living God. And, and we're just so grateful. I'm grateful for Corey and everyone on this line, Lord. So continue. Uh, to cover us with the blood of Jesus, the healing blood, the protecting blood, the cleansing blood, and continue, Lord, that we may be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And we just continue to live in a received position, ever giving you thanks, always giving you thanks, Father God, always. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And I'm going to call you right afterwards, Corey. All right, all right. Lo lo love you guys. Ha have a good love night. You, God. Thank you. God bless everybody.